We are here for our second video of 2022, and it is time for a sewing project. I'm here in my new sewing nook of my office that I set up last week. I'm so excited to finally have a dedicated space to have my sewing machine, so I'm not carrying it around from place to place, trying to figure out where its home is. Uh, so that's why we're filming in here today. All future sewing projects will be in the office. And today I am working on a corset top. And I'm really excited about this pattern. So I'm using Butterwick's 5935. It's 150th anniversary pattern, making history. Sass. Hey. Stop. Sass is making extraneous video noise. Uh, and I've chosen the one A right here. That lace is in the back, so you can't see laces in the front. I thought I might be more apt to wear this one, maybe with a sweater or with a beautiful peasant dress in the summer, springtime. Uh, and I'm super excited to actually make a real corset this time. I've been using this other pattern that's for like a medieval vest, and it's not made to have boning in it. And I also did not know what I was doing with the boning. I've done a lot of research. I wasn't trimming the tops to make sure they didn't have like sharp edges, so I was stabbing myself with this plastic boning. <laughs> so this one's going to be a lot better. I'm really excited about it. And it's going to be made of this lovely plaid here that I thrifted for $2 uh, for, it's about maybe a yard of it that I had total. Uh, so it will be this lovely plaid, which kind of Christmassy, but it's got the brown in there. So I thought it would work for late winter, early March in this time where things just feel kind of bleh. The red and the green come together to be quite nice with the burnt orangey color. So last winter we, well not winter, it was supposed to be a fall trip, but we went to Vermont and we cozied up in this beautiful log cabin. I will post some pictures uh, on this video and we watched Outlander I haven't finished it, we just binged watched a bunch of episodes of Outlander and snuggled on the couch and it was just so magical and that's what really inspired me once I saw this fabric. I was like, I need to make a corset top inspired by her. So I posted the photo on my Instagram, that's the inspiration, but it's just like a bodice top she has. She doesn't really wear corsets like the one that I'm thinking of, but I didn't want to make it an exact cosplay, just something inspired by Claire's tenacity, willingness to help others in all face of danger and just really be herself and let her gifts shine as a healer. So that's my inspiration. I want this to inspire me in the same direction. So for this project, I pulled some cards already just to prepare to give you the best explanation possible about them. And the card that, well, what deck did I use? That's first really important to know. So the Wild Unknown Tarot. This is the guidebook here. I absolutely love this art and the explanations are both by Kim Crafts. Uh, just a really stunning work <laughs> and I just love it and it really inspires me creatively when I see all the images you'll see in a little bit. So the card that represents this project is the Ten of Pentacles. Pentagrams. Depends on what deck you use. Usually you use the wild green witch, which has ten of pentacles, but these are pentagrams. And this card, before I open the book, is really about just living in the abundance of the moment and being thankful for what you have and what you're doing and just finding joy in day-to-day -day life. So this is card number one. This would be easier with bookmarks, but I'm still fumbling. Fulfillment, abundance. The Ten of Pentacles signifies material and spiritual abundance in nearly every area of your life. The number 10 usually indicates completion, and in this case, the journey was well worth it. So be generous, not only with your money, but also with your wisdom. Provide guidance to those who struggle. You will be rewarded tenfold. So I think that this represents me coming out of my shell and doing this project here and teaching all of you and also remembering that I have a lot of abundance in my life, so I need to remember that as I work on this project. Card number two, action to avoid. We have the Eight of Swords. So this card, we have this beautiful chrysalis here with a butterfly inside, but she's surrounded by these sharp, sharp swords that could hurt her, or that's at least 
what she sees and I think this is avoiding feeling like you're trapped. This looks pretty trapped right here. So let's see. Card number two, trapped, powerless, eight of swords. Surrounded by obstacles and threats on all sides, you find yourself the victim. You see no way out, no available choices. Your perceptions keep you from opening your wings and taking flight. What keeps you suspended here, yourself or others? The Eight of Swords demands an answer. You cannot hang here much longer. So just do the darn thing, make the project. I think, so side note, I feel like this card has already come into play. Here we are. I used all of these beautiful sunny mornings to do nothing, avoid things, watch YouTube videos, drink coffee in bed, hibernate because it was so cold but it was actually pretty warm in this room. And then I was like, I'll just do it on my day off. Today is Monday the 17th. It's the day of the Cancer full moon. And it's like it's a big spiritual day, but I should not have delayed because it is very, very rainy right now. And so I did not get the lighting that I was dreaming of for this video. So just like, don't feel trapped. Just do it. Just go. That's the message here. <clears throat> and then action to take. I was so excited to get this card because it's a great creativity card. It's the Eight of Pentagrams. This beautiful spider card. I love spiders. I'm not afraid of them. I always rescue them. I either put them on the sun porch or outside or just leave them. All right, so this card represents weaving your beautiful creative web in your own independent way, going with the flow. A lot of people have talked about how careers now are more like webs. You never know where you're going to end up or what you're going to end up doing in your life process. It's not like you go to that office job for 50 years now and then you retire with a pension. It's just not the way the world works anymore. And I think this is also with creativity. You need to be flexible in your project and just go with the flow and weave your own independent, beautiful piece of work that is your life as a web. But I will also read from the book here for you. So craftsmanship and skill. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. It's also about crafting, which is perfect. This is a craft project. The spider is a true master of her craft. She weaves against all odds with skill, intricacy, and confidence. The Eight of Pentacles requires a similar approach. Hone your skills. You're close to finding mastery at your craft, so strive for it. Pay attention to all the details. In some cases, this card means you need to find a new hobby, something you truly enjoy, start a project, become good at it. I am starting a project, which I hope to become good at, and I think it's truly talks to taking my time with this, honing my skills, making sure I learn this really, really well so I can use it as a foundation for making some other garments in the future. So without further ado, let's get started. The first step was to lay out the pattern pieces and get everything cut out. So this is the outside of the fabric with the plaid and then next I had to do the same thing with the lining. So it takes a lot of time to cut out pattern pieces but finally understand the actual process and can read this pattern and comprehend which pieces go together. So huge progress. Once everything was cut out, it was time to pin both layers together. This was like a puzzle. I couldn't figure it out at first. I also got very warm in my office because it was finally 40 degrees in January. So hence the wardrobe changes, but this took forever. <laughs> After much time, as a as Rachel Makesy would say, check her out, by the way, floor troll, it was finally time to start sewing. I don't know why, but my sewing machine likes to unthread itself all the time, so this was quite the process. Here I am getting the black thread in there and just sewing all the pieces together where I marked them up. Pretty easy. After trying on the lining and the outer shell, I found that it was actually too big for me in the way that I wanted it to fit and did some measuring and discovered I could just take out the middle back panel and then it would line up pretty well and I would be able to still have the straps fit. So that's what I'm doing here and just re-sewing those seams. I just cut it out. I was trying to remove the stitching and it was too much, too much time. <laughs> then doing the same for the lining so that they match up. Now it was finally time to add the boating to the wrong side of the 
lining layer. So what I did, instead of buying the expensive stuff that's supposed to cover the boning, is buy some bias tape from Joann's and just sew that in there and then slide the boning in. My sewing machine, as it was Mercury Retrograde, had a really hard time with this, um, but I eventually got it, and here it is working for the most part. Um, a few tangles, but we got through it, and I got all the boning in there, and it look, seems like it will be much more comfortable now that I've cut the rounded edges. Once I had sewn those channels in, I measured and cut all of the different little boning pieces to go in. It seems like there aren't that many of them in this as a normal corset, but it was a lot of them to go in. And making sure the edges were rounded was huge. I didn't have any ripped seams or any holes in the fabric already like I had in previous projects. It was now time to sew both the wrong, so wrong sides together, sew the two pieces. Uh, so I pinned these on the floor and then here I am sewing them together. I didn't think you needed to watch the whole pinning process, but that was also like coming up with the puzzle pieces to get the two to line up together, but I couldn't have been more happy with it. Next, I decided to add an extra bone next to where the lacing is going to go in the back just to make that more sturdy so that it looks good and lines up properly. In hindsight, I'm really glad I did that. Next up is pinning and sewing bias tape around the outside to cover all the rough, ugly edges. Uh, this really gives it a nice finished look and makes the edges sturdier. Uh, so this took a really long time to do and is very intricate, but oh my goodness was it worth it um, to sew the wrong sides together and then do the bias taper on the outside instead of turning the project inside out. Now I realized I did not have enough of this, so I had to finish this up on a different day. Now it was time to take all my frustration with Mercury Retrograde out with a hammer by putting in those grommets. It took 28 in all, uh, 12 on each side and the back to lace up, and then four for the shoulder straps. Uh, this was went pretty well. I didn't measure exactly right on one side, but you really can't tell when it laces up. And because it was Mercury Retrograde, there had to be some sort of an imperfection in this project. with this corset project. Are there imperfections? Yes. Are there things I wish I could have done differently? Of course, but overall it came out so well and I really feel witchy and happy in it, which is all I could ask for. So for the tarot, I believe that these really represented what happened during the project. First off, the ten of pentagrams really represented what I was able to do in this project by bringing out this part of my creative side and my witchy side together to show everyone that it's possible to make a corset. So if you're thinking about it, if you're curious about it, do it, buy the sewing machine, do the craft project, it might not be a corset, but whatever that creative thing is that you want to do, this is now your call to action from me. Be inspired, do it. So for our action to avoid, we had the Seven of Swords, so that's feeling trapped. Mercury retrograde, Cancer full moon. My goodness, did I want to quit in the middle of this project and just give up, but I did not. So I think that I embodied that card well. And then finally, the action to take was the beautiful Lady Spider of the Seven of Pentacles. This card really really came to light because I feel like I honed a craft that I was looking to do. I now feel confident in my corset making. The next one I make will be even better and I can't wait to try one of the front lace ones for a future video, probably in March. So hone your craft, be inspired, and create something. 
Uh, it's pretty much my big meaning of that one. Well, this is it for this week. I know this end part was a little bit boring just staring at the cards, but I actually filmed this and mentioned the cards from the last video somehow while I was still dressed up. So I'm just going to blame it on Mercury retrograde again because it's that time of year. So please like, please subscribe, share with your friends who are crafty or witchy or who would like to be either one who, or who are curious about witchcraft and tarot and I will see you either next week or in a couple weeks. Next week is in bulk and I really want to do something special so we'll see where my creative brain goes. Bye everyone!